water stones. Use a coarse grit wet dry sandpaper. 120 to 220 is a good, good grit range. You're going to need a flat reference plate. A granite plate like this or a piece of glass will work fine. Break the back of the paper, running it over the edge of the reference plate so that the paper will cup down rather than up. Wet the paper so it'll stick down to your reference surface. By putting a grid on the stone, you'll have an index of when the stone is flat. Even pressure on the stone will ensure that you get even removal of material. When you've gotten rid of the grid, you know the stone is flat. You can also check with a straight edge if you like. Another method for flattening stones is with a coarse diamond lapping plate. The advantage of a diamond lapping plate is that you have a flat reference surface in your hand that cuts very aggressively and very quickly. And you don't have to have a supply of paper on hand. A grid or just watching the swarf on the surface of the stone will help you know when it's flat. With the marks removed from the stone, you can see that it's flat. It's important to remove the slurry from the troughs of the diamond stone. If you don't, they'll, it'll harden in those troughs and clog them. This covers basic sharpening. If you're going to sharpen chisels or any blades less than an inch and a half wide, you're going to want to use this lower jaw on the honing guide. Something to keep in mind is that when you do drop down into that lower jaw, you change the angle by about five degrees. So when working off of your, your, your stops, 30 degrees becomes 25, 35 becomes 30, and so on. If you have a blade that's gotten a nick, or the secondary bevel has grown to a point that you no longer want to have to polish all that surface area, then you can regrind this blade with a low revolution grinder or your honing guide and some coarse grit sandpaper. 80 to 150 grit is going to be a nice grit range for working that edge. If you're going to use the honing guide, set your primary bevel off the 25 degree stop and go to work on the sandpaper. Something that's nice to, to give yourself is an indicator of where you're removing material. Take a sharpie or any other permanent marker Mark the bevel and then when grinding you'll be able to see where you're removing material and where you're not. Don't bring the reground edge right out to the tip of the blade. Leave a bit of the polished edge to maintain the integrity of the edge. I've not touched on some of the more advanced elements of sharpening, such as cambering or putting a radius on a blade and techniques specific to chisels. These topics are covered in depth in DVDs we've made with David Charlesworth and Christopher Schwarz that are referenced at the end of this video. This method should have removed some of the mystery surrounding sharpening and will allow you to enjoy the opportunity 
to work with truly sharp blades.